Hello everybody, and welcome back to the channel. Welcome, welcome, welcome. And thanks again for sending in all your tattoos. If you haven't seen yours yet, keep an eye out for them in the future. We're just backlogged a few weeks. We do pre-record these, so sometimes it does take a while to get through them all. I wanna thank you again for subscribing if you have already, and if you haven't, make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you are notified when we put up a new video. This week, we've got a fresh new batch of artist tattoos, so I'm pretty excited to see what we've got. And make sure you stick around to the very end where we give you our best and worst tattoo, or as you know we like to call it, our Let's get into it. So first up on deck, we've got Matt. Matt sent in these two cross axes with uh, some nice thin flames going up. And right away, I, I've gotta say, I'm a, I'm a pretty big fan of uh, this tattoo overall. I like everything about it. I do like the line weight that it carries and it not being too heavy in the lines. Everything's nice and thin, including the flames. Um, the flames are obviously a bit thicker than the rest of the tattoo, but I really like the weight of the flames. They're not overpowering the axes by any means. And it seems like most of the lines that you have in here are pretty straight, pretty parallel. The wood grain is nice and clean. It doesn't get muddy in there. It really looks like you know how to handle a, uh, a liner. I like the little bit of stippling you got. Again, it's not overdone. It adds a nice texture to the blade. And if we kind of zoom in a bit, that's where we're going to see a little bit more of the uh, flaws, I, I guess you could say. On the right X, there's a little piece of a line that kind of comes down a bit too far and it just gets a little squirrely on that top line. Uh, again, I'm nitpicking, but hey, that's what you wanted me to do. You wanted me to kind of go deep on this guy, so that's what we're here for. I don't know if I'm a huge fan of the way that the line tapered off on the inside of the blade on the left X. I think maybe you could benefit from it kind of just fading off a little bit more. It's similar to the top line, how the top line kind of cuts a little bit shorter. It just feels more natural. The bottom line kind of seems like it drags on a bit too long, but it might heal just fine. Uh, again, I'm nitpicking because this is a pretty solid tattoo. Thank you for sending that in, Matt. Excellent work. Sophia Alfonso sent in some tattoos, and these are the first tattoos tattoo she's got to do on real skin. So let's check these out. Wow. <laughs> uh, yeah, these will, these will be fun to talk about. What is this? Is that a butt? I can't tell if it's like a butt or a tooth. Couldn't tell you what it is. Interesting. Um, but let's critique the work itself. Right away, line work, line consistency, you know, you've got, it's a little bit thicker up at the top than it is at the bottom. The bottom kind of falls a little bit thinner than the top lines. And same thing with the legs. There's like some thick lines and then there's some thin lines. And so on this tattoo, it seems like you need to work on overall line consistency, keeping the needle in the skin the same depth throughout the entire tattoo. Sometimes when you're pulling a line at an angle and you keep that same angle, but you're going a different direction, you're gonna cause the line to get bigger on one side than the other. You have to keep your hand turning as the line goes around so you keep the same consistency, the same angle consistency as well. That doesn't just mean the same depth, that means keeping your hand the same angle throughout the entire line. He also sent over a hand that says, wow. So I'm assuming this is your first tattoo on skin altogether because the line work really isn't that good at all, if we're being honest. Uh, I'm not sure if that's because of the machine you're using, the, the needles, or the technique. It's hard to decipher in this one because the line is so sporadically inconsistent. There are parts where I know the finger is going to end up falling out. The little pinky, I feel like that line is gonna be really thin when it heals. And then you've got some blown out lines, like in the middle finger where it's bending down, and the fingernail is very thick and kind of just pulverized, for lack of better words. When I was in my first tattoo shop, my, my mentor had me tattoo on a bunch of oranges and grapefruits to see these kind of inconsistencies. You can, you can almost tell when you're gouging the skin out too much on an orange because you get the same effect of line that you're getting around these fingers here throughout the entire thing. Like I said, this is your first tattoo, so I'm just assuming that you're an apprentice in a shop and they're giving you tasks to work on. I would ask them if you could get some either fake skin or some oranges or bananas, something that has some skin that's not so forgiving. If you're tattooing an orange or grapefruit, you'll really be able to see the inconsistencies of lines that you make throughout this. Well, you did send a healed photo, that's right. Yeah, so you can tell through the healed photo that the pinky just didn't heal up very strong at all, and uh, some of those pinky lines still might fade away in time. You can also tell that the middle finger blew out quite a bit. And same thing with the left-hand side of this banner. The, the beginning of WOW, the banner, this bottom corner of the banner really blew out. It got really thick. It's not as clean as it should be. You should be able to tell exactly where the line starts and the shading ends. So my biggest concern with your tattoos would likely be the line weight and the line consistency. I'd be working on those a lot more. Keep doing tattoos of this size, this style, nothing too crazy. I, th I think you're right where you should be. I think you're right in your lane with the tattoos that you're choosing to do. I just think 
think you really need to focus in on getting very consistent line work. Maybe go back over this hand tattoo since it's on your leg, maybe bump it up, use a, a nice like bold nine liner or 14 liner or something like that and really give that outside perimeter a nice, thick, clean line. Email that over to me when you're done with that. I'd like to check it out. But thanks again for sending those in, I appreciate you. The next tattoo we have was sent in by Paulo. Paulo sent in this Oni mask. It's pretty beautiful. I love how the teal contrasts with the orange in the background. As far as being bright and vivid, nailed it. I love the bold lines that you have through this tattoo. This is an exceptional example of the line work that I talk about introducing into tattoos. You have very thin lines in the hair and very thin lines around uh, glare spots like on the nose. Instead of just having a dark teal and a light teal, this little bit of line there gives it this nice ridge. It makes the glare look a lot more sharp rather than just having the two tones of blue next to each other. And I love the bold lines that you have around the nostrils, around the eyes, especially the way the lines come up around the eyebrow and almost to that thicker teardrop point. Beautiful work. I like how you have the organic feel running through these horns. I do wish that they were a little more less uh, wood grain and a little more like an antler almost. And what I mean by that is the lines kind of just dissipate almost into nothing. I wish they almost continued more uh, and just didn't stop abruptly. And they, they kind of just look like they're haphazardly put in there. It's the one piece of this entire tattoo that I'm not a big fan of. Other than that, everything else in here is pretty solid. Even when it comes to the two snakes being symmetrical, they're, they're, they're pretty spot on. There are a couple tiny little pieces here and there that aren't quite symmetrical, but for the most part, you nailed it. I like the pepper shading that you have in the hair, and then you've got a nice solid shade in the blue, so you can tell that you really know how to control your colors. You're not just filling in the entire section of the tattoo with color. You're leaving some room to breathe. You're leaving some of that skin tone, which is really nice, and it shows you've been tattooing, or what I think you've been tattooing for quite some time. So another good tattoo today. Thank you, Paulo, for sending that in. I'm happy to see some good stuff coming through this inbox, so right on. Much appreciated. Tyler G from East Tattoo sent in a portrait of Kodak Black. Okay, there's a lot of things I'm gonna kinda uh, go through fairly quickly on this tattoo because I think there's a lot of things to get to. Number one being solid black. There's not really any solid black in this entire tattoo. I might see a little bit of black on the outline of the word and a little tiny bit of black in the headphone. But other than that, there's not really any black in here. The, and when I look at the reference, there's a whole lot of black. I'd like to know how long this took you because it, to be honest, it kinda seemed like you zipped through this one. Even when it comes to the outline of this word, it seems like there's some holidays that you kinda missed in there. Uh, some skin tone that's kind of showing through that obviously that should be solid black there should be a lot of solid black in his coat or jacket yeah now see like sometimes i'll give him the benefit of the doubt like when when portraits are warped sometimes it could just be the warping of the leg so i know that probably kind of you know flattened his face a little bit but still aside from that there are many things here that uh you know, that you need to kind of focus and work on. You know, if, if I broke down piece by piece the, the hair at the top, there's no there's no texture in the hair. It just seems like you kind of shaded it to get it done. And when that hair has so much texture going on, you know, take a small liner and really get those circles in the hair. Make it feel like, you know, like you'd want to run your fingers through it. The directional shading that you have on the face, let's use, for example, the, the top right of his forehead. It just seems like you kind of just whipped out from the corner and then just left it alone. These shades in his head kind of need to be built in softly, very, very softly, slowly move that machine and work in soft layers to get a nice soft shading. The eyes, so when we come, come down to the eyes, it looks like this guy's got very big eyeballs, which and you look at the reference, they're not that big. I don't know what kind of slipped away from you there, but it kind of looks like you may have outlined the wrong part of the eye because his eye's not supposed to be that big. Overall, it kind of seems like you need to utilize a liner a bit more, maybe like a five liner or a nine liner. And I don't mean about getting in solid lines, I'm just talking about shading with those nine liners, getting in crisp areas, like when we come down to the nose, around the nostrils. You know, it, it can't hurt to use a nine liner to softly build in the edge of those noses instead of using your mag, because right now when you're using your mag, it's just kind of getting a little sloppy in there. And the same thing goes for the eyes. You know, you could use that nine liner or the five liner to build in nice shapes for the eyes. Slowly, just to make sure you're nailing those right on and you're not outlining the wrong part of it. The same thing could be said about the lips and the mouth. He's got a grill in the reference. It doesn't quite look that way in the tattoo. When it came to the mouth here, I would probably be using like a bug pin three outliner. I would be very slowly working in the small details of this grill. On the left side of our left side of his mouth, you've got this line in the teeth that just kind of stop or dissipate, but there's 
it, it needs to keep going, you know, because the teeth don't just connect like that. They need to keep going. It's little things like that that are going to help the believability of uh, being a portrait, being a realistic tattoo. So from there, we go down to the, the pinky and the star ring. It doesn't really look like a star ring. These are just small things that could have been prevented had you gone a hair slower with a smaller liner. And don't be afraid of, of going light and working your way darker. You can always go darker, but you can never go lighter. If we bring our eye over to his knuckles, they just, they're, they're very sharp. It doesn't look like knuckles. You've got some solid black shading in those knuckles that's just not there uh, in the reference. To be honest, it, it doesn't quite look like fingers. So it's like you're, you're putting black where there's not black and you're not putting black where there should be black. And then we move our way down to the jacket. This is where I think a lot of that solid black should be, if not 90% black. You've got this tiny little corner of black in the collar of the jacket, but honestly, like bring that down through the entire thing. I know his uh, the top of the turtleneck isn't solid black, but it's it's you know, 90% black, 85% black, and where yours is, you've actually got skin tone in here, and skin tone we'll call 0% black. That does not exist in the reference. The lightest part of that jacket in the reference is still at least 75% black. You need to bring that through and show that. When it comes to the zipper, you've got these tiny little dashes in the zipper when you need to bring those dashes all the way through. And, uh, and show that, that it's a zipper. The, the facial hair, you've got facial hair in the reference that just isn't in the tattoo. Obviously doesn't make sense. You know, he's got a little bit of a, a flavor saver and he's got some of that, you know, that goatee fur down here, but it just doesn't show up in the tattoo. But one of those things that you might just have to like look at the reference when you're done with the tattoo and be like, oh shoot, I missed something. And stuff like that, like facial hair is pretty easy to add to a tattoo when you think you're all finished up anyway, since it's gonna be the uh, topmost foreground of the piece. You know, nothing's going over the facial hair. You can easily just kind of sketch that in. What I'm saying is this is a prime example of staying in your lane knowing what you're able to do and what you're not to do. Of course um, as tattooers you know we like to experiment a lot and practice on our friends and things like that. However this isn't something that I would put out to a customer quite yet. If this is on your friend, good job keeping it on your friend. But like I said, this isn't something that I would be putting out to the world just yet. I would focus maybe more on smaller realistic things first before you kind of jump in and do a tattoo like this that has a lot going on. Uh, because it's not just a face, it's a face with tattoos, with hair that's very difficult to pull off. The headset he's wearing, the jewelry, the, the name, there's a lot going on and it might not seem like it, but things like this may, may cause you to subconsciously rush through the tattoo because that's kind of what looked like happened. There's a lot to unpack there. So thanks again, Tyler, for sending that in. I'd like to see more of your stuff in the future. The next one sent in is by Brad Watkins. Brad, you mentioned that sometimes you have an issue with maybe chewing up skin or just having a, a little bit choppy shade sometimes. Right away, overall, I mean, I mean, I love this tattoo. I think you're doing a great job, but I am gonna break down uh, piece by piece and kind of let you know what you can do better. I do enjoy your whip shades. I like your whip shades a lot. When it comes to her horns and things like that, the whip shades work out very well. The whip shades don't work out as well when it comes to the face. What would be a nice goal to have is the whip shades give you a nice texture for the horn up here, but when it comes to the face, we want those face shades to be nice and smooth. The whip shades aren't gonna do it for you. I don't mind the gray wash outlines that you have in this face, but I think you can achieve the same thing when it comes to this face with shading rather than having those lines in there. And what I mean by that is like the small gray wash outline that you have around her chin, on her inner chin, those shades could have been achieved with just some dark shading rather than having that outline there. And same thing with the cheekbone. I feel like the cheekbone, you'd have a little softer gradation from the shade to her, the rest of her face had that outline not been there. Like I said, it's not bad, I don't hate it, but you could do without. When trying to accomplish smooth black and gray shading in a face, like I said, the whip shading is not gonna do it for you. You almost have to do a soft pendulum shade. You're not gonna be hitting as deep. You're rather going to be doing more layers than hitting it all up at once. So maybe turn your machine down a bit, maybe stick it back into the tube just a hair and kind of just slowly work some pendulum shades to where you're building up those shades and they're becoming nice and soft. And I think that's where you'll eliminate some of those holidays. Because right now, let's look at the shadow underneath the hair on the forehead. That's where I can see some of those holidays that you're speaking of, where your needle is kind of skipping a little bit, right? That's just the way that your machine is set up and I think it might actually benefit you uh, using a different machine with a shorter stroke. My guess would be that you have a longer stroke machine that you're working with right now and that's why you're seeing those missing pieces. If you were to have a shorter stroke machine and work in those pendulum shades, I think you would build up those layers and get a nice smooth shade rather than the more choppy shade that you're getting currently. And that could be used for everything. That could be used for, you know, the shade under the chin, on the neck, and things like that. You know, it might benefit you to set up two machines just so you get the, the, the contrast and texture 
because like I said, I do like the texture in the horns that you have with those whip shading. I'm just not a fan of the whip shading when it comes through the hair and the face and things like that. Also, when it comes through the lines throughout the hair, I feel like these lines aren't grouped together as well as they should have been. A trick I learned about hair a long time ago was hair always comes to a V. So like no matter where hair is coming from, it's always going to end up at a V shape, which I don't see a lot of here. The lines are kind of just starting and ending in the same place. They're very parallel. It doesn't seem like they're bunched together like hair would be. Kind of same thing here, you know, you kind of just continue and finish off those lines. Make sure they don't stop, uh, you know, there. You can always, you can always meet together too. So some hair starts at V and some hair ends with Vs. I see like one or two V shapes in here, but I, I don't think you did those on purpose. If we come down to the bottom of this hair, you just have a lot of these random like dash lines in here that don't look uh, very pleasing to the eye. If you were to continue like this line here, uh, continue this line, and then you were to have like almost a V shape right there coming out of it it, it, it just makes it more believable that those are clumps of hair. I'm also not a huge fan of how a lot of your lines are not complete. I wish you would kind of just finish those to the end. A perfect example of you doing a good job in that is the horn. The horns kind of have lines that stop and, and they don't, they're not just floating anywhere. So to be honest, I mean, the horns are my favorite part of this tattoo. Uh, it shouldn't be that way, it should be the face, but uh, I think you did a better job on the horns than anything else. Overall, it looks great. There are just a few things here and there that I would work on. My number one concern being learning how to make groups of hair better and then working on some nice soft shading with pendulum strokes on a short stroke machine. But thank you Brad for sending those over. I look forward to critiquing more of your stuff in the future. The next tattoo sent in is by Patrick from Germany. Patrick, you sent in this spider on the hand, which is really dope. I love the line weight that you have here, the nice thick bold lines. I know those things are gonna hold, not gonna go anywhere. And then you've got the thin lines for the spider webs running throughout. So right away, I'm a fan of the contrast and line weight that you've got. One thing I would have liked to see is the shading that's underneath the name come down a bit further to where it doesn't just stop abruptly, or maybe just, you know, have a softer shade coming down to where you can still see those bold lines from the spider legs, but the shading is coming down a bit more on the hand, just so it doesn't look like the shading is randomly there under the name or word that is there. I suppose you could afford to open up the shading in the legs a little bit, maybe not quite so dark throughout the entire thing. I mean, I am a fan of it. I like all the darkness, but if you were to kind of just open up a little bit of skin tone in sections of those legs, I think it would, uh, you know, help give you some nice contrast and shading throughout the entire tattoo. I probably wouldn't have put any white in this tattoo, it being on the hand and it's being such a small amount that you have in there. It's likely not gonna stay over time. So it's kind of just unnecessary pain at that point. There are a few things in here, which I know it's on a knuckle, so it's gonna be kind of tough, but I wish it was a little more clear on the knuckles where the uh, spider's face would be. I would like to see some sort of eyes or something like that under the body. It just kind of gets a bit dark and a little illegible. Knuckles can be very hard to tattoo and even harder to heal correctly. So I would be very curious to see what these knuckles look like with the legs running down on top of them. I know most of the time ink doesn't like to stay on the very, very tips of the knuckles. That being said, you might end up with some weak looking legs, but that's nothing that a touch up or a second pass uh, couldn't fix. I would like to see how that healed up the first time if you're able to grab a photo. Not a whole lot to say about it. Good tattoo. A couple small things I would work on. So thanks again, Patrick. So that's it for this week's tattoos. But before we go, I want to make sure we get into my favorite tattoo and my least favorite tattoo. So this week, my favorite tattoo is, is a toss up. I can't make up my mind whether it's Paulo's Oni mask or the two axes from Matt. Both of these tattoos are exceptionally well done. I absolutely love the cleanliness that Matt brought throughout the axe tattoos. I love the thin line weight that you brought to this tattoo and the consistency throughout the entire thing. It's an exceptional job. And the Oni mask by Paulo is also very good. The, the color, the boldness, the different line weight that you brought throughout this entire tattoo is, is a good example of what I talk about a lot throughout these videos. For both artists, Great job, exceptional work. And now for my toilet tattoo. This week's toilet tattoo is brought to you by Tyler and his Kodak Black Portrait. Sorry, Tyler. I know you've been tattooing for 13 years, but you said you were just getting into portraits, but there are a lot of things that you just need to tighten up with this guy. You gotta slow it down, follow the reference a bit more. I know you might be in a shop where everything's kind of very speedy, like get things done, but tattoos like this really need their time. You need to take the time that it needs to accomplish it and, and for it to have a nice big wow factor. You can't speed through these. Send me some things that you do on a day-to-day -day basis. I'd like to compare those to what you've got here. But thanks again for sending that in, Tyler. I do appreciate you. Congratulations on being this week's winner. Kind of. So that's going to be it for this week, guys. Uh, thanks again for sending all your stuff in. If you haven't already, please make sure to send in your tattoos to ponycritiques at gmail.com and we'll see yours on a future episode. Also, make sure to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you can be notified next time we put up a video. Thanks again. I appreciate all of y'all. See you next time.